Hey, well, welcome back into our series about our calling to minister unto the Lord. My name's Phil Strong, and I hope you're really uh, getting stirred inside about uh, what law the Lord is leading us into. I feel prophetically that there's a call upon God's people to come back to that place of consecration, to be set apart like Samuel for worship and ministry before the Lord, that we would minister before the Lord as he did. And uh, I hope you're enjoying the series. Um, the fourth thing that I want to share with you today is that a, a worship-centric lifestyle, and I'll explain that in a minute, a worship-centric lifestyle will be the evidence of the emerging church. I believe that we're coming into a time where God is calling the church to rise up, uh, to stand up, and to be a part of the solutions that our community needs. I call this the emerging church. But one of the signs of the emerging church will be that we, we will be absolutely committed to worship first and foremost, to minister to God. Yeah, it's not about rituals, it's not about traditions, it's not about buildings, it's not about balance sheets, it's not about numbers, it's not about smoke and mirrors, it's not about LCD panels. It's about worship as a heart attitude, a worship-centric lifestyle, meaning that is what everything revolves around. A worship-centric lifestyle will be the evidence of the emerging church. I want you to have a look at the way God led his people into victory in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Uh, Jehoshaphat, uh, it's a cool story. Read the whole chapter. But I want you to scroll down to, um, uh, well, let's go, uh, verse, um, oh my goodness, look at this. The Spirit of the Lord, verse 14. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, son of Benaniah, son of Jael, son of Mataniah, the Levite, the sons of Asaph in the midst of the assembly. What does that mean? The Spirit of God is going to come upon people in a powerful way that prophetic voices will rise up, prophetic voices will call people out into the pattern of worship and lifestyle that God has for them. Maybe that's you. Maybe it's your voice that's needed in the people of God today. Come on, be stirred by the Spirit of God. I want you to scroll down. There's a great conversation, but I want you to scroll down to verse 18. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 18. Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. The idea that there would be no way that they would, uh, there's no lower place that they could adopt it except bowing with their forehead to the ground. And all of the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell down before the Lord, worshipping the Lord. And the Levites of the Kohothites, the Korathites, stood up to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. And they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And when they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, Judah, and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you will be established. Believe his prophets, and you will succeed. And when he had taken counsel with the people, he appointed those who were to sing to the Lord and praise him in holy attire as they went before the army. And as they went, they sang, give thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love endures forever. And when they began to sing in the praise, the Lord, the Lord set an ambush against the men of Ammon, Moab and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah. So they routed for the men of Ammon and Moab rose against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, devoting them to destruction. They helped to destroy one and each other. Wilderness came to the watchtower of the wilderness. They looked out, and there were dead bodies lying on the ground. None had escaped. It was a fantastic story where Jehoshaphat responded to the prophetic word that was stirred by the Spirit of God, and he called people out to worship. And he said, we will go out, and the worshipers went first. They praised the Lord, said, praise the Lord. His mercy and his steadfast love endures forever. What is this a sign of? It's a sign of our commitment to worship and minister before God. And in doing so, we will see him win victory as we emerge as God's people who are committed to ministering unto the Lord. I want you to think about this absolute dedication to, to ministering unto the Lord. And I want you to think about the example of Mary. Mary the woman whose story was told in all four Gospels. It's a fascinating account that has different perspectives, but scholars believe it's the same story. It's the same instance. Jesus is reclining in the house of Simon, meaning he's enjoying a meal. And a woman comes in 
and she breaks open this alabaster jar of ointment, this fragrant oil. The, the only way it could be used was to smash the jar, and once it was smashed, it could never be used again. This is a sign of dedication. It's a sign of devotion to worship. And this woman who anointed Jesus, Jesus says she would be remembered. Let me read you the words. I'm reading today from uh, the Gospel of Mark. And uh, those who were there, verse 4, were indignant. Why was the ointment wasted? For this ointment could have been sold for more than a year's wages and given to the poor. But they scolded her. Jesus responded and said, leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. For you will always have the poor. And whatever you want, you can do for them. You can do good. But she has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burial. And truly I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. This is a beautiful story of this woman who, who knew that all she had, she would give in worship of Jesus. She ministered unto Jesus as the Son of God. She worshipped him. She dedicated herself and all that she had to giving what she had to Jesus Christ. This is a beautiful, pure picture of what it means to minister unto the Lord. I wonder if you would consider, what is it that I have to bring of myself before God to anoint his presence with my praise, to weep because of my gratitude at his mercy and to pour out praise for his love that he has for me. I believe we are called as God's people to emerge as the church who ministers unto God. And as we do that as a priority, we will see God the, see, do great things before our eyes. Let's respond with a yes and amen. Let's respond and minister unto God as a priority in our lifestyle.